matter. Heretics and tyrants will come suddenly and unexpectedly. How about uninvitedly? <laughs> Sounds like the trio. Maitreya, Jermaine, and Sananda. <laughs> uh, burn, they were out in Italy and lay room waste. Huh, interesting. Uh, let's see. Oh, this is another one, Channeling Jermaine. Ugh, let me read in that one. Uh, some of these are just too, ugh. You know, you tell they channel, probably most of them, don't, don't, don't get a word from the Lord, they channel New Age spirits. Uh, this is Pope Pius the Ninth in 1878. He says, since the world is against God and his church, it is evident that he has reserved the victory over his enemies to himself. This will be more obvious when it is considered that the root of all our present evils is to be found in the fact that those, those with talents and vigor crave earthly pleasures and not only desert God but repudiate him altogether. Thus it appears that it cannot be brought back in any other way except through an act that cannot be ascribed to any secondary agency and thus all will be forced to look to the supernatural. There will come a great wonder, which will fill the world with astonishment. This wonder will be preceded by the triumph of revolution. The church will suffer exceedingly. Her servants and her chieftain will be blocked, scourged, and martyred. And Edgar Cayce predicted that there will be one more pope uh, after John, John Paul II, who will serve a short term. Um, so that's, that's pretty much that on these papal prophecies. I find it interesting that Edgar Casey also predicted one more pope after this one, and of course this one being Pope Ratzinger. Uh, well, some people don't think Ratzinger, Ratzinger is Illuminati, uh, but we know he is. He's one of them. And I was reading an article just the other day about how he was on some ecumenical council years ago with Jeb Bush. Uh, you know, planning for one more religion, no doubt. Uh, got a couple minutes left on the first hour. Listener call in line 260-356-2611. Uh, been a real quiet night. Steve, you there? Mm, you know if I'm... Yes, we're here. Yeah, my... Uh, I know I... you have at least one listener. I know, I like talking to the wall tonight. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I think I'm not even coming back for the second hour. Let's see. I checked the phone. It works. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to look at mine to see if it was working here. I know the volume's kind of low tonight, but that's all right. Oh, I don't like sitting here listening to myself talk. Oh, something some other people do. I get those all the time. Need to do more series. <laughs> Yeah, maybe I will. That way, you know, I'll just be prepared to do a series for a night or two. And, you know, but I'm not expecting to be talking to other people. Uh, Sherry? Yeah. The phone works. You have a caller. All right. You're Come on. Call. You're up, caller. Uh, hello? Hello, how are you? Pretty good. Uh, I wanted to thank you for... Uh, Showing me how to make an orgone blaster. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Uh, about six or seven years ago, I guess, I started noticing this strange humming sound one night. And I didn't have a clue what it was. And so for the last, uh, all that length of time, I've still been trying to figure it out. I finally decided it's a machine that somebody's running that's, apparently national and uh, it was giving me headaches it would upset my stomach it first one thing then another and uh, I couldn't figure out what to do and then I ran across uh, your information about organ blasters so I just happened to have a bunch of crystals and some copper wire but I didn't have any bondo but I figured, well, you start somewhere. So 
I started wrapping copper wire around crystals yesterday. And last night we were having this giant storm coming toward us. Uh, they were saying ground winds 100 miles an hour and uh, hail the size of golf balls and possible tornadoes. And I thought, well, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> and I just kept working on making these things. All I had was the wire and the crystals, and I'm just wrapping wire around crystals. Yeah. And uh, sitting them around the house, and I kept thinking, well, that storm ought to be here just any minute now. And then I realized that it was quiet outside, and uh, it just dissipated. I don't know where it went. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and not only that, the headache that I had had for two days also disappeared. Yep. You know, I, I drove out about a mile in every direction uh, when I first moved out here because I didn't know which way the bad weather was going to come and just do some more going in the directions. And every storm that starts heading this way will beat up the outside areas, and then by the time it gets here, there's just nothing. That's no what happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was incredible. <laughs> <laughs> I was really worried. I thought, oh, boy, I'm, I better go put something over the car. I went outside and, and took some old carpet padding and put over the windshield in case the hailstones <laughs> hail would break the windshield. I said, oh, yeah. God, ball size. Wow. Uh, this is back when we really didn't know what Oregon would do. Uh -huh. You know, we just had directions how to make it and, what, you know, what to do with it. Uh -huh. and, and we started learning everything it would do. It was just amazing. I mean, you, you I've see, never even heard of it before. <laughs> you see these vicious clouds coming your way, and by the time it hits the areas, you've got Oregon, and it starts dissipating, like you know, dissipating like a baby. Wow. Yeah. And I'm I'm really glad to be able to overcome these uh, this machine, whatever the heck that thing is. Uh, is it a, a microwave weapon you're being hit against? Sounds apparently, like yeah. I think that's what it is. Yeah, it sounds like you're being elfed. And uh, what they use is extremely low-frequency microwave weapons that they target people with. Yeah. And they make you feel like you're on drugs, you're drunk, you're dizzy. Yeah, you're yeah. I was driving one day. I thought I was going to pass out at the wheel. Yep, yeah. But they're offing you, you know, and that's one of their attacks. And, and what you need to do is, is put one of those uh, those organs in your car. Yeah, I did that today. Uh, put one in your pocket. Right. You get one of the mini ones and throw it in your pocket or get a pendant. Right. Uh, uh, but keep it on you, and, and everywhere you go, in your car, in your house, in your yard. Okay. And you'll just be protected from them. They'll give up after a while. Good. I, it, it was so bad the other night. I was up at 3 o'clock in the morning. My head was killing me. Yeah. I decided to uh, just go for a walk. Uh, put one underneath your bed. You will sleep like a baby. Ah, yeah, okay. <laughs> put one under your bed. You'll be snoring like there's no tomorrow. Great. You know, it's, it's, it's great for people with insomnia. Uh, wow. I've had it for years, and then when I put some organ under my bed, I've been sleeping like a baby. Well, that's wonderful. Uh, we're going to wrap up the first hour. Pardon? I'm going to wrap up the first hour. All right. Uh, but thanks for calling in. Okay. All right. All right. God Thank bless. Bye-bye. Folks, we're going to wrap up the first hour. We're going to come back in about five minutes, take a five-minute break. We'll be back. Uh, listener call on line will be the first one on the phone, 260-356-2611. We'll see you back in about five minutes.